Welcome back to another Bitcoin video. This time I will be talking about Gigi's excellent article Bitcoin is Time, which is a chapter in his upcoming book 21 Ways. He's also the author of 21 Lessons, What I've Learned from Falling Down the Bitcoin Rabbit Hole, which is available as a physical book and also as a free digital version on 21lessons.com. It has been one of the many resources for my Why Bitcoin Matters video, so check it out. You can find all the links in the video description. We are all familiar with the expression time is money. Gigi argues that the relation also goes the other way, that money is time, or more specifically that Bitcoin is time. Without a certain time we all agree on, there is no order of events. Without order of events, there is no unambiguous transaction history, no state of the ledger we can all acknowledge, no Bitcoin. What makes Bitcoin such an incredible creation is decentralized timestamping which leads to a history of events that everyone can trust while no central party needs to coordinate it. This is achieved through cryptography, proof of work and the difficulty adjustment. In fact, timekeeping is so important in Bitcoin that the original name of the blockchain was not blockchain but timechain, named by Satoshi Nakamoto himself. But let's rewind a little bit here and start at the very beginning, with the Bitcoin white paper. This is how Bitcoin is described in the white paper. In this paper, we propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed timestamp server to generate computational proof of the chronological order of transactions. A timestamp server is in its essence just a sophisticated word for clock. Bitcoin creates its own concept of time, the block height or block time. There are two subcategories of money. One are physical artifacts, shells, gold coins, dollar bills, etc. And the other are informational lists, account balance at your bank, IOUs and so on. The first method, a physical token, directly represents the state of things. The second one, a ledger, indirectly reflects the state of things. Each comes with advantages and disadvantages. For example, tokens are physical and distributed. Ledgers are informational and centralized. Tokens are inherently trustless, ledgers are not. When going digital, we handle information which is never physical, therefore only ledgers can be used. The problem with information is that it's easily copyable, which can result in people double spending, meaning spending the money twice without someone noticing. And the problem with ledgers is the centralized nature. A central authority can prevent double spending, but it can also censor transactions or commit fraud itself as the ruler of the system. The ledger-like nature of all digital information is the root cause of the double spend problem. Information never represents the state of the world directly. Further, the movement of information implies copying. Information exists in one place, and to move it, you have to copy it to another place and erase it at its origin. This problem doesn't exist in a physical realm. In the physical realm, we can actually move things from A to B. This difference in properties shows that there really is no way to hand over information. It is impossible to pass on a digital token like you would pass on a physical one, since you can never be sure if the original owner destroyed the information on his end. Digital tokens, like all information, can only be spread, like an idea. That's why I also said in another video that Bitcoin as a currency is the transaction history recorded in the blockchain. You don't own a token, you are just part of the ledger entries. A transaction history needs timestamps, as you can expect by the word history, to be in order. Without an absolute sense of time, there is no way to have a defined order of transactions. And without a defined order of transactions, the rules of a ledger cannot be followed. How else can you make sure how much money you actually have? How else can you make sure that things are in order? You always need to know who gave how much to whom and most importantly, when. Bitcoin reinvents time itself. It says no to seconds and yes to blocks to create its own clock. All clocks rely on periodic processes, something that we might call a tick. Like pendulum clocks, quartz and caesium clocks and even metronomes where you set the start and tempo of the tick. After that, the tick remains constant, a fixed frequency. Bitcoin's tick is not absolutely fixed, but probabilistic. A new block gets added to the chain on average every 10 minutes. That's Bitcoin's tick. While a metronome keeps its pace constant once it is set, Bitcoin's time varies for each tick because its internal mechanism is probabilistic. The purpose, however, is all the same. Keep the music alive so the dance can continue. There are three essential ingredients for timekeeping. One is causality, two is unpredictability, and third is coordination. Let's explore them in order. The arrow of time describes the causal relationship of events. No causality, no time. Causality is also the reason why cryptographic hash functions are so crucial when it comes to timestamping documents in cyberspace. They introduce a causal relationship. 
since it is practically impossible to create a valid cryptographic hash without having the document in the first place, a causal relationship between the document and the hash is introduced. The data in question existed first, the hash was generated later. In other words, without the computational irreversibility of one-way functions, there would be no causality in cyberspace. The blockchain is a digital history of causal events. The hash of a new block always depends on the hash of the previous block. The previous block leads to the next block, never the other way around. This is the history of events or rather transactions that everyone can agree on. Causality fixes events in time. If an event was determined by certain earlier events and determines certain subsequent events, then the event is sandwiched securely into its place in history. But time is also irreversible and unpredictable. Entropy increasing functions are required to establish an error of time in the digital realm. Just like it is practically impossible to unscramble an egg, it is practically impossible to unscramble a SHA-256 hash or cryptographic signature. Without this increase in entropy, we could go forward and backward in time willy-nilly. We can't use predictable processes as proof of time. We always have to rely on something that can't be predicted in advance, like the front page of today's newspaper. Bitcoin relies upon two sources of unpredictability, transactions and proof of work. Just like nobody can predict what tomorrow's newspaper will look like, nobody can predict what the next Bitcoin block will look like. The transactions and hash of the previous block are necessary to find the hash of the current block miners are working on. You can't know the transactions in advance, so you can't generate a hash in advance. That's why timestamps are always the now. You cannot timestamp a future date in time or a past date in time. The only way to find a valid proof of work is by making a lot of guesses. And making a single guess takes a little bit of time. The probabilistic sum of these guesses is what builds up the time chain that is Bitcoin. To summarize causality and unpredictability in the context of time and Bitcoin, by utilizing the causality of hash chains and the unpredictability of proof of work, the Bitcoin network provides a mechanism for establishing an indisputable history of events witnessed. With causality, what came before and what came after is impossible to tease apart. Without unpredictability, causality is meaningless. Now, here is a little bit of a longer passage from the article because there is no way that I can formulate this more succinctly. Without proof of work, one would always run into the oracle problem because the physical realm and the informational realm are eternally disconnected. The markings on your list of sheep aren't your sheep. The map is not the territory. And whatever was written in yesterday's newspaper isn't necessarily what happened in the real world. In the same manner, just because you use a real world clock to write down a timestamp doesn't mean that this is actually what the time was. Put bluntly, there simply is no way to trust that data represents reality. Except if the reality in question is inherent in the data itself. The brilliant thing about Bitcoin's difficulty adjusted proof of work is that it creates its own reality, along with its own space and time. The relation between our time and Bitcoin's time is guaranteed through the difficulty adjustment. No matter how advanced computing becomes, miners will find a valid proof of work on average every 10 minutes. The difficulty adjustment is essential because without it, the internal clock of Bitcoin would tend to go faster and faster as more miners join the network or the efficiency of mining devices improves. We would quickly run into the coordination problem that Bitcoin sets out to solve. As soon as the block time falls below a certain threshold, say 50 milliseconds, it would be impossible to agree on a shared state, even in theory. What this means is that Bitcoin is not costly in energy, but costly in time, as it should be, because it's the only way to create absolute scarcity. More energy does not translate into more Bitcoin, and we can't manipulate time. If you think about time for a bit, you realize it's quite a strange thing. We say that time is the only absolutely scarce resource next to Bitcoin. We can't produce more time, but time is not exactly capped. Time just goes on from beginning to infinity. What is scarce is the time we have. The distribution of time is quite equal. Lifespan is mediocristan. None of us will be a thousand years old. For time to move on a minute into the future, we all basically need to give a minute of our lifespan. Time is basically an illiquid, untradable asset. You can't buy more in exchange for something else. It is the ultimate resource, as Julian Simone puts out. This makes Bitcoin the ultimate form of money, because its issuance is directly linked to the ultimate resource of our universe. Time. To summarize, timekeeping is based on causality, unpredictability and coordination, and all three are taken care of in Bitcoin. Causality is provided by one-way functions, the cryptographic hash functions and digital signatures that are at the core of the protocol. Unpredictability is provided by both the proof-of-work puzzle as well as the interaction with other peers. You can't know in advance what others are doing, and you can't know in advance what the solution to the proof-of-work puzzle will be. 
Coordination is made possible by the difficulty adjustment, the magic sauce that links Bitcoin's time to ours. Without this bridge between the physical and informational realm, it would be impossible to agree on a time by relying on nothing but data. If you took something out of the video, I would appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for further content and then I see you next time.